several of you have uh, asked about the uh, uh, magnetic rule, uh, how to uh, use it, how to make it accurate, uh, and uh, how to keep it from shifting around. And so I thought I'd uh, show you the first tool you need to make sure that your magnetic rule works correctly, and that is a good bench brush. One of the reasons why this thing may not stick to the, uh, to the magnet is because it's not making contact due to all the dust and dirt that gets built up there. You want to make sure that both the rule and the magnet are clean so that they come in intimate contact and they'll, they'll stay relatively still there. Uh, now, still, if you, do, if you do happen to peel this up, it can shift, but while, but while it's, uh, it's, on the, um, it's on the magnet, it takes quite a bit of pressure, sideways pressure, in order to get it to, to move. So, <clears throat> number one. Number two is how do you zero it out? Um, that's a good. That's a uh, a good question. Sometimes it depends on the on the operation and what you want to zero it to. Um, we have short scales here that uh, uh, are used just with the table, or we have uh, long scales that can be used uh, with uh, several uh, different types of, or different uh, tables built up. Like I've built up this this uh, dado slash routing machine, um, <clears throat> and they, they all fit across the magnets that are here, and they're all, they're all uh, zeroed exactly the same way. On the fence, <clears throat> you have a little black piece here called an indicator, and uh, it's actually stuck. It's taped with uh, double sticky tape to the bottom of the fence. Um, very strong double sticky tape, and you need to find you need to find where your zero mark is. Now, if you on this dado machine, if you were if the zero mark were the let's say it's the right side of the dado, you would bring the fence over. Now, here's a, here's a tip for using this fence. When you when you move the fence. Press against this, the, the plate at the beginning, at the, the uh, front of the fence. This presses it against the flat part of the extrusion, which, which is what it indexes off of and remains square. If you, if you press against that as you move it, when you throw this lever, the fence will not walk on you. It won't go sideways. If, if, you, if you move the fence up like this and then throw the lever, see how that fence went sideways when I did that? Move that around. And it, and it moves, okay. But if I move it like this, it doesn't. Now I can move it right up against that dado, okay, to where it's just kissing the dado. Clamp that down, and it didn't move. And then look at my zero mark through the indicator. And now, <clears throat> here's the next tip: the lines on these scales have a width to them, okay? If you put the edge of the indicator against the edge of the scale, okay, the, 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 uh, the line on the scale, that's going to be a whole lot more accurate than trying to put the edge of the indicator over and split the line on the scale. Um, so I've, right now, I've got the edge of that indicator over the edge of the scale. Now here's one more problem <clears throat> that, that may creep into uh, uh, and ruin your accuracy. That's called parallax. If you look at the, uh, at the, the figures that I've posted, the six and seven, um, the, uh, the parallax <clears throat> is, is uh, caused when you're only, when you're only citing uh, off of one reference. You know, I could, uh, that, that edge is about 3 sixteenths of an inch above the scale, and if I am sighting from this side and looking at it, I'll get a different reading than if I come over to this side and, and sight at it. I've got, to be, I've got to be looking at that edge from the same way all the time. And there's two ways to do that. One way is to take a, a square, set it to two and three quarter inches, put it right there, 
and use that square at like a gun sight. Okay, you have your sight that's uh, that's nearest the bolt, and then you have the sight at the end of the uh, uh, at the end of the muzzle. Okay, and so I'm sighting right down um, off of the tip of the square, which is light colored, to the edge of the of the indicator, which is black, to the edge of the zero mark. Okay, of course <coughs> that's sometimes a little practical. Uh, impractical to get that square out all the time. So I do it another way, and that is I bob my head back and forth the, until the side of the fence disappears. Okay, I have, an, I have a, um, a reference mark here. It's a light corner. It's almost white on the top of this uh, aluminum fence. And then towards the base where the fence meets the table, it's dark. So I take my head back and forth until the light line disappears, or, or the light line covers the dark line. At that point, the the uh, the uh, flat of the surface of the rip fence is gone, and then I read my indicator, and that uh, and that gives me that gives me a reference. And I always use that one or the other, either the square. Or, or the flat on the on the uh, side of the of the rip fence, be, to read that indicator, so that I don't have parallax. As long as I'm consistent from where I make my my um, um, my readings, I won't uh, I won't have any any problems. Now, there's one more thing that I that I will tell you, and that is that sometimes when you're when you're working, especially when you're working with a saw blade, you have to be aware of of wobble, run out. Sometimes a saw blade may actually wobble as it turns. The run out could be anywhere from um, a couple of thousandths to maybe as much as ten thousandths on a good saw blade. Um, that means that if you come over here and index this this uh, tape off the uh, the side of the uh, the rip fence, you, the saw blade may be at a slight angle because of the wobble. It's it's only it's only a few thousandths, but over this 30, 30 uh, some inch long rip fence, that could be that could be uh, pretty devastating to your accuracy. So you may want to actually make a cut, okay? Pass a board by the saw blade, make a cut, and then set your, set your zero mark off the kerf. The edge of the kerf will be, will be the most accurate reference for, um, for uh, saw cuts made with that blade. That's it, guys. Um,